What's up, Wastelanders? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing great, and I hope you are too. It's me, Kiki B. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kiki B Plays Fallout 76. Did you miss me? I missed you. It's been a minute since we had a new Fallout 76 video. My kids had two straight weeks of spring break, and while you would think at their age they'd be capable of doing things independently, apparently they are not and constantly want and need mom's attention like they did when they were toddlers. So now they're back at school, and I moved my workspace to a separate room with an actual door, and I can finally work in peace again. Now, I have extensive boards on Pinterest with Fallout and Sims building inspiration, and I've been dying to make some of these for a while now. By the way, if anyone is interested in seeing Sims videos at some point, let me know. Please, I'm really looking for an excuse to make some. Anyway, Pinterest is always suggesting new things to me, so when I stumbled across this beauty the other day, I could literally see it in Fallout, and I just had to build it. Like, seriously, that siding is the pallet wood wallpaper, and the dimensions are absolutely spot on for use with this build system. I especially loved the little detail of a bench that also serves as a sort of porch railing. All in all, it is just a really cool house, and I had to make this happen. But before I show you how to build this marvel of convoluted roofline engineering, if you love what I do here and are interested in supporting this channel, why not join our Patreon family? Right now we're brainstorming over there and working together on some really great video ideas, so if you'd like to join in the fun and have a more direct line to me, head on over to patreon.com slash kikibee or click on that link in the description. If you hurry up, you can even get your name in the credits of my videos. Your support means the world to me and helps keep the equipment running and the caffeine flowing over here so I can continue making the top-notch content you know and love. Thanks, you guys. I really love you to bits. And of course, join us over on Instagram at kikibeeplays. We would love to see you there. Before we actually start building, I want to take a quick look at what is kind of the big draw with this build, and that's the roof. We've actually got proper eaves here, like a real house. Now, I understand why this isn't a part of this build system, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. The roofs we have look pretty bare and stupid sometimes, depending on what you do with them, and in a case like this, where you're going to double wall the exterior so you can have nice siding, it looks even stupider. When I saw the photo that made me jump up and build this house, I realized pretty quickly that the standard bare, too small roof just wasn't going to cut it for me here. So if you've ever felt the same way and you want to have a reliable method for creating a realistic roof with perfect eaves every time, here you go. For this particular build, I'm putting it on a 2x3 foundation, with the long sides being the front and back of the house and the short ones being the gabled ends. And do not put this thing on top of big rocks like I did, because it will cause stupid problems later that I will show you eventually. So the first really easy step here is to create an overhang on the ends, so we need to move these foundations out a little bit from the center. And if you don't have one of the catwalk sets, I do highly recommend that you get them, because they are invaluable for all kinds of useful building tricks. But if you don't have them, I suggest you use either the plain concrete foundations or perhaps a tiled foundation so that you can easily measure the spacing when you need to move this a quarter tile. Anyway, move the end foundations a quarter tile out, and we're going to put a flat roof here and then change it to a sloped one so that the game will let us remove the wall from under it. I'm going to go with the enclave roofs here because they look great. So now you've got a roof that sticks out a quarter tile on the end, and we're going to do the same thing on the other end giving us a roof line that's three and a half roofs wide in total. They're going to have to overlap somewhere to make that happen, and it's really up to you where. I'm keeping my overlap down on one end. So stack up four of your favorite tables, pop a flamethrower trap on top, and burn the crap out of those end roof pieces. You can wire your flamer trap to power it, or just exit build mode and manually activate it, your choice. Now that those roofs are a couple of floaty yellow ghosts, we're going to fill in the rest of the roof. It can be a little fiddly snapping the last pieces in there, and you might need to get underneath it from the opposite side to get them to snap. Now that that's done, we're going to burn all of these, because if you hadn't figured it out yet, we're going to have to overlap more roofs. In fact, it takes 16 roof pieces in total to make this pretty roof on a 3x2 house. Before we go any further, I recommend putting down a safety foundation off there a little ways in case you accidentally move too many things and can't figure out where it's all supposed to go. 
Now, we need to move these floors out a quarter of a tile, but we're also going to have to move them a quarter of a tile to the front and back. So move them away from the main floor, and then split them apart like this. The next step is going to have to be done freehand, but it's pretty simple. If you were using concrete foundations, change them to wood because it's easier to measure. Now you want to hold down the build button and use your bumpers or your mouse wheel to move the foundation straight up and down. If you look closely at the ghost floor that shows the old position, you need to move it down so that the top of the floor now is just below the very bottom of that first row of diamonds in the mesh. I really hope that makes sense, and also that you can see it well enough in the video. If you're not too sure about your positioning, it's quick and easy enough to check, though, so don't sweat it too much. Use your catwalks now to move the opposite one down to the same level. Now pop down a wall and a roof on one side to check if you've got it at the right height. Another thing that I really love about the Enclave roof here is that it's pretty forgiving if you're just a teeny bit off. If that looks good, go ahead and do the other side. See, this looks really great, even though it's not quite perfect. Now it's time to burn these new pieces, and then we're going to move the middle foundation pieces so they're half a catwalk from the lowered corners. Now we can put up three more lowered roofs on both sides this way, just like we did with the first set. I recommend that you do it one side at a time, and then move the foundations back where they belong in between, but that is up to you. You've always got that safety foundation if you need it. Time to burn it all again. This makes it a lot easier when you're putting up walls, since depending on how precise your positioning was, you might end up with collision issues on those top arches. This way, you have none of that problem. So now that we have a beautiful transparent yellow roof in place, it's time for the walls. Surround your original floor with another round of foundations, and put them on the corners as well because we'll need those in a minute. Uh, I'm making the actual floor here green so that it's easy to see. We're going to double wall and create an L-shaped structure with the bottom of the L optionally divided into two small rooms. Doesn't really matter what walls you use here, just make sure they're doorways for now, and of course the plain Basic wood walls do not work for double walling, so any other wall set's fine. Next up, we're going to make a slight variation on our favorite column blueprint. Stack up two small columns, and this time we're going to put our Deathclaw egg a little ways in front of them instead of directly under like we usually do. This is going to allow us to slide that column right into the ugly outer corners of our double walls, which will not only cover those messy ends, but serve another purpose that I will show you later. So go ahead and shove these into all the outer corners. To make this look a little more polished, we're going to move the bottom columns up on top, and then remove the now bottom columns and replace them with a full-size one on each corner. Also saves you a tiny bit of budget. Now 
Now it's time to put in those upper wall parts and we wanna double wall those as well. So we're gonna to have to use the brick set because that's the only set you can do this with. All you have to do is put in the top arches, burn them, and then add the opposite ones facing them. Afterward, of course, you can change them to whatever type you like. And now you'll just do the same for the half walls along the center, and you're good to go. Alternately, if you don't want to double the upper walls for some reason, you can place single arches and half walls that with the wallpaper side facing outward, and then add a flat roof as a ceiling throughout the house. Personally, I really like the high ceilings in here, and I feel like it makes it feel a little more spacious in what is otherwise a pretty small house. Once you've got all your upper walls and possibly if you want your ceiling done, it's safe to go ahead and repair everything. And now just go ahead and slap a wallpaper on everything inside and out. I'm going with the palette wood wallpaper because it matches the original inspiration so well and it doesn't much matter what you put inside for now, you can change that later. Flagstone or dungeon walls or the other wood paneling would also look good on the outside if you don't have the palette wood. This right here is why I said earlier not to build on top of rocks like I did, because you won't be able to snap these lower columns underneath. But I have a sort of solution for that in a minute. Now at this point, you can leave the foundations that you have and be done. But if you want to, you can put in a floating staircase and use that to put upper floors in instead, which I think looks really nice. So get rid of this foundation here, and then snap a long catwalk piece, and snap the stairs of your choice onto that. Now you can remove the catwalk and the rest of the foundations and add an upper floor. You will need to have at least one foundation somewhere in your camp to be able to place upper floors, so throw one down anywhere off to the side and then get back to work. I absolutely cannot emphasize enough though that you will not be able to remove or even rotate any of these floors after they're placed unless you want to move your entire camp and start all over. So do this part carefully. Pick a floor pattern that's easy to align so that no matter what you go with in the end, it will look nice. And then carefully put the floors in. If you end up accidentally snapping another floor to the outside, or snapping one halfway in like it sometimes wants to do, you're screwed. After the floors are in, we can go ahead and snap some metal posts onto the bottom of the ones that we already placed in the corners, and also snap one in the middle of the back of the house. Now, to make up for my mistake in building on top of the rocks, I'm going to remove these two columns that are causing the problems and replace them from the ground up, so to speak. So I'll just put my column blueprint in here and then remove the upper piece this time and snap a full length one on top. It will stick through the roof a very small bit, which fortunately is not too noticeable, especially because this roof is so thick. Uh, I'll do the same on the other rocky corner now. This one sticks up a little farther, but again, it's not too bad and I learned a valuable lesson, right? On the front corner of this porch, I'm really screwed, but you won't be because you learned from my mistakes. So use your blueprint, move the bottom column up to the top and then snap a full size one under it like we did on all the other corners. Then you, unlike me, will snap another one under the corner and it will look much better than this. Unfortunately, by the time I'd figured out this was a problem, I was already on the second rebuild, so I was really not redoing it again. Fortunately for me, it's pretty close to the rock on that corner, so it's not too noticeable. Anyway, now it's time to change the walls to what we want. I'm going with the brick windows initially here, but later I changed those to the new first responder set, and I really love the way those windows look. I am going to be doing a quick build and review of that set. I've had it for weeks now, but I just haven't had the time to really make anything with it. It is fantastic, though. So there's our cabin done, and it looks amazing, but I want to add in the one more really nice touch that I noticed in the photo, which is the long bench across the edge of the porch that also serves as a railing. I loved this idea, and the shorter of the two crowd bench seats is perfect for this. 
You'll want to move your columns out of the way to do this, so snap a safety one up on top and pull out the long ones on both ends. Now just grab that crowd bench seat and line two of them up very nicely along the edge with a small overlap in the middle. And now you may have trouble snapping one or both columns back in. So if you do, just grab your flamethrower trap, burn one or both benches depending on what's in the way, and your columns will snap back in place no problem. We do love a good flamethrower trap. Now that is a seriously good looking house there. And now that we are done building, just don't forget a front door, let's take a look at the finished thing. So here's how it looks with the other windows. I really, really like them. Plenty of plants on the porch, you know I love my plants. And I've put the potted tree into the empty white pot, which looks a lot better than the ugly blue and yellow thing, and I will be showing you that trick in an upcoming video. I adore these wall shelves, and after the shipping container house, I noticed myself using them a lot more. I hit a generator in these stash boxes here. It doesn't quite reach all of the house though, so I hit another one in the bed later. We've got our lovely bench slash railing here and a nice view out over the water. Heading on in through the CD shed door, which is probably the best door in the game. We have a small living area with some simple decor and some beautiful armchairs that I made out of the modular sofas, which I will also be showing you in an upcoming video. The kitchen here was really a challenge because none of my sort of standard kitchen tricks matched very well with the overall style of the place, so I had to try out some different stuff, but I really like the way it turned out. Kitchen decor is really challenging as it is because they really just don't give us enough actual kitchen stuff but I'm also working on a video on that. I went with the dirty mid-century style stove with a cooking pot merged in here, but when are they gonna give us a nice clean version like Yasmin's that functions as a cooking station just without Yasmin? I don't always wanna be stuck with an ally just because their furniture is nice. It would be great if they would give us ally-free versions of those objects as well, because some of them are just great decor pieces. Also, I finally realized how easy it is to actually tuck in kitchen chairs, which saves so much space. And again, you guessed it, I will be showing you that in an upcoming video with the plant pot and the armchair and some other cool stuff. Heading toward the bedroom, I didn't really want a solid door here, and I like the curtain doors, but I only have the Nuka Girl one, which did not fit here. So I went with the lovely yellow curtains from this season, which don't look very yellow, but they still work here, and at least we have something other than red, purple, or filthy white now. This one's a bit more neutral, so it goes with a lot more stuff. I kept the bedroom simple, and of course I needed some plushies and my favorite fish lamp. It's a small space, and it's further restricted by the fact that you have two doorways opening into it, but it worked out pretty well anyway. I'm not sure how I feel about the blue door here, but honestly, I just kind of forgot to try any other doors, so whatever. Finally, in the back, we've got a little workshop space. I had originally made this a bathroom, but then I decided I didn't want to add a shed for workbenches, so I just shoved the basics in here instead, and again, kept the decor pretty simple. I was finishing decorating this in the middle of the night, and I just wanted it done, which I think shows a bit in these last two rooms, but it still looks okay. I really hate that tiny weapons like the drill and the pipe wrench have to go on the big weapon racks. It makes absolutely no sense to me. But it is what it is, and I like using these pegboard racks to hang up some tools in a workspace because they just fit so well. That jackalope plushie is just so damn cute. So 
so yeah, that's the whole thing. Uh, I tried to keep it fairly clean and mid-century looking, in contrast to most of my builds, which tend to be a little more junkyard chic, I guess. And I like how it turned out. So now you know how to create an amazing looking roof with actual eaves that doesn't look shrunken and weird on a double walled house, and how to build a great stilted structure as well. That's it for me today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Don't forget to make sure you are subscribed and you've turned on those channel notifications so you don't miss out on the next absolutely amazing video. If you liked this and you're interested in supporting what I do here, check out that Patreon link down in the description. Join us over on Instagram. And with that, folks, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.